Hey, what's going on you guys? My name is Max and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to color grade your footage to look a lot more cinematic. Now I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro, but if you're using something like Final Cut Pro, that's completely fine too. I'll be editing a few different clips so we can get a better idea of different lighting conditions, as well as different compositions, uh, color styles, everything like that. And I'll even be showing you how I color graded this footage to make this video. Also, please ignore any footage that's kind of boring or mundane. I just sort of took it around my house. But anyways, let's get right into it. All right, you guys, welcome to Premiere Pro. If you're using another piece of software like Final Cut Pro, that is totally fine. All of the same ideas are going to apply. They might just be laid out slightly different. All right, so jumping right in, we can see this is what our footage is going to look like. And we can see the before here. Now, as you can see, that's a massive difference. So it's really pretty simple to get something to look like this. Um, there are going to be a few basic concepts that we'll use. We're gonna try out LUTs, and we're also gonna do a different style completely on our own without the help of a LUT. So the first thing to note is that I do have my Lumetri scopes up, and if you click this wrench icon right here, I have these two activated. Um, the histogram and the RGB parade are the two that I find the most useful when editing and color grading my footage. And we'll talk about why a little bit later. So we can first start by going into the assembly layout and getting rid of everything that we have. Now, my sequence is a 4K sequence at 24 FPS, and that'll work just fine for what we're doing. So step one is going to be dragging in our raw footage. Also, what we wanna do is hit Control or Command L and then delete the audio layer because there's really no audio here that we wanna save. This is just something I filmed in my living room, really quick, dirty, without a gimbal or anything. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is click right down here uh, to create a new adjustment layer. And then we'll leave it at the 4K resolution at 24 FPS. And we'll grab this and drag it in. And then you can use C or B if you're on a Mac uh, to use the blade tool and just chop off the extra. So now we have an adjustment layer on top of our piece of footage. Then what we're going to do is hop into the effects layout and click on the adjustment layer. Come over to your effects and type crop. Then we'll take this guy right here and drag it on top. Now in our effects controls panel on the left here, we can see that we have some options for top, bottom, left and right and so on. We're gonna use top and put it at 10% and then go bottom 10%. And what you can see is that creates the map bars or the uh, letterbox effect that you see in cinematic films because they're shot in a different aspect ratio than 16 by nine. So this is one way of accomplishing map bars. However, I personally choose to do something a little bit different and I'll show you that quick. If I delete this adjustment layer, I can actually go into sequence settings up at the top and then change the horizontal resolution to 1920. And what this will do is you can see right here, give us an aspect ratio of two to one. So if I hit okay, and then okay again, you can see it cropped the top and the bottom a little bit. So we're not seeing the black bars in our preview window here, but when it's full screen on a 16 by nine standard display, so 1080p, 720p, 4K, whatever it might be, um, you will see the black bars on the top and bottom. Now, the reason that I prefer to do this is because ultra wide monitors are becoming so much more popular than they used to. And when you're creating 16 by nine content and then putting fake black bars over the top of it, the ultra wide users aren't going to be able to get the maximum resolution possible. So by switching the actual aspect ratio of your final production into two by one, it's going to fill up a little bit more of their screens, but still give 16 by nine users the same cinematic look and feel. All right, now that we've got the letterboxing out of the way, let's hop into the color tab. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I have set up my Lumetri scopes uh, with the histogram and RGB parade. So let's walk through this quickly uh, so we can get an idea of what we're actually looking at over here. So the histogram is going to look similar to the one that's actually on your camera. Uh, at the bottom, we can see the shadows and at the top, we can see the highlights. Since this is a darker clip, you can see a majority of the data is down towards the shadows. Uh, and then we have some yellow uh, highlights up here, which we can see in the bokeh in the background. And then on the left side, 
you can see down at the bottom again zero is your shadows and 255 or 100 is your highlights and generally speaking we don't want things to go below zero or above 255 because that's when clipping occurs we can actually see that this part of the bokeh right here is clipped now i'm not going to worry about that too much since this is such a dark piece of footage and it's not something i'm actually going to use it's just for demonstration purposes but generally speaking uh, above zero below 255 and you should be good all right now with all that out of the way we can open up the lumetri or lumetri uh, color panel on the right and now we're going to have various options that look similar to uh, camera raw or lightroom if you're familiar with either of those but they introduced something new here called an input LUT. An input LUT is for if you're shooting in some type of log format uh, or something like that. So I have a Sony, so I might shoot in S-Log uh, when I'm outdoors. And basically what this will do is automatically do your basic color correction for the format that you're shooting in. But we're not gonna worry about that today. We're gonna start by making sure that our white balance is to our liking. And I think it's honestly pretty close. It was just a little bit warm uh, in the white section, um, but otherwise it looks pretty good. Our exposure is going to be a little bit dark in this, but we can bump it up a tiny bit, bring back some contrast. We'll probably have to leave these highlights pretty high. Then what we'll do is hop into the creative tab here and we'll see the option at the top for a look. Now this is the same as basic correction where it's a LUT, but this is a creative LUT. So I've actually downloaded a few. I have Daniel Schiffer's Vintage, and then I have the free pack from Premium Beat, as well as Peter McKinnon's LUTs. However, those aren't uh, installed right now. So we're gonna be walking through using a LUT, and then we're also going to walk through uh, just doing it manually, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. All right, so I'm going to select Daniel Schiffer's Atari LUT, because I think that looks pretty nice on this footage. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is drop the intensity down to about 70%. And we can see that gives us a nice before and after. It kind of brings a lot of these tones into a cool green blue. And then the highlights it brings into that yellow orange. So the teal orange split is very common in cinema, especially if you're looking at sort of uh, vintage or retro style films. Then what you might wanna do is add a tiny bit of sharpening so I do about 10 and then play with your vibrance and saturation in this clip I actually want it a little bit more vibrant and saturated than it was so we can see if we toggle that we've created a nice effect all right so what if we want to do this from scratch well it's actually not as hard as you might think we're going to bring over our footage again over here and then again controller command L and delete that audio layer. Then we're going to come into our basic correction and start making some modifications. So we're gonna add a little bit of contrast, up the exposure just a hair, bring the shadows down a tiny bit, and the blacks down with it. Then what we're going to do is come into color wheels and match, and then take our highlights and actually bring them up a little bit. I know that they're touching 255 up here, uh, but that's just because these are blowing out a little bit, but we're going to have to sacrifice that uh, to bring up the overall exposure a little bit. And we can bring these midtones up just a hair. And we actually have a little bit of room to pull the shadows down like that. All right, now what we wanna do is bring some blue tones into these shadows and maybe some warmer tones into the midtones and highlights. So I'm going for a very warm sort of Christmas feel. So we can try something like that. And if we toggle that on and off, we can see we've created another sort of vintage look um, without the use of a LUT. It's a pretty basic look, but it will definitely get the job done. Now we might even wanna go into here and pull the reds down just a hair like so. And then we can go into the creative tab and do the same by adding some sharpening, uh, bring up the uh, saturation and vibrance just a little bit, and we can call that one good. We've definitely gone for a different look between this first vintage LUT and the second one. In the second one, we sort of went for a warmer Christmas feel. And in the first one, we kind of brought in some mood and some darkness to it. All right, so the next piece of footage that I'm going to work with is just 
my stairs. So again, control and command L, delete the audio layer. And we're gonna take a look at this. And we can see overall the exposure is pretty decent. Um, we could bring it up a little bit, increase a little bit of contrast. Um, and then again, we're gonna have this issue where we're blowing out the highlights here. Um, unfortunately, we just don't have the dynamic range to be able to capture all of that information. But overall, the color temperature and white balance seems pretty good. Now what we'll do is hop into Creative and we're gonna go ahead and select a LUT. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Daniel Schiffer's Suave and then bring the intensity down quite a bit. And we can see it's a little bit dark, so we're gonna come into our color wheels and bring up the shadows just a hair and then really bring up the mid-tones. I think actually we can bring those shadows down. We've got quite a bit of room to work with them. All right, then we can hop back into Creative, sharpen it just a little bit. And I think overall that's actually pretty solid looking. It's not too much, but it's a subtle look that we're going for. All right, sorry about that. Premiere Pro decided to uh, crash on me. Anyways, so we'll go ahead and hit Control or Command L, remove the audio again, um, and then pop into the color panel. And we can see, again, overall the exposure is pretty decent. The only thing I might do is just tweak the white balance just a hair, bring it uh, a little bit more to the orange and pink side. And then we're going to hop straight into Creative, and we're going to use the basic LUT and just sort of bring it down to about 80, and then go ahead and sharpen it by 10. Come into our color wheels once again, and this time we're going to keep the shadows down a little bit, but lift the mid-tones. We have quite a bit of room to work with in here. And we can see, there we go, flattering face, love it. We can see our footage looks a whole lot better than it did. And that's just about it. So there are a million different ways you can color grade. I'm not an expert, I'm just a guy who makes YouTube videos but this might give you a little bit of insight as to how I go about color grading and editing my footage. I'll leave links to the LUT packs that I use from Daniel Schiffer, Peter McKinnon, and Premium Beat in the description. Daniel and Peter's are paid, but I highly recommend you go over and support them. They both have awesome YouTube channels and have a lot of great content. So that just about wraps up what we're doing here in Premiere Pro. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that and maybe learned something. If you did, please drop a like and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Anyways, my name is Max. It was fun. Let's do it again soon, but I'll catch you in the next one.